Yes! Venus Direct. Hello, self-esteem. Welcome back to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I'm a tarot reader and an astrologer, and I'm very happy to be coming at you with another pick a card reading. This is a reading on your fears, so let only the brave one really sit down and listen to this reading. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, guys. This is a reading in which I will hopefully get to the bottom of finding out what one of your core fears is, and I'm going to try to bring light into it. I have a selection here of oracle cards and archetype cards that will help me diagnose the specific fear that could be unconsciously ruling over your relationships. And then I'm going to bring some light bringers, some light oracle cards to try to provide you with encouragement and support as to how you can best overcome this fear. Now, the topic of fears came to me in a very natural way because today we have a balsamic moon, which is the final phase of the moon's energy, the final phase of the lunar cycle, before the moon is able to renew itself, to become new. Tomorrow, on the 1st of February, we have this energetic reset. It's going to be a new moon in Aquarius and the Chinese New Year of the Tiger. So fresh, wonderful energy will be coming in from tomorrow and towards the end of the week. Also, when on the 4th of February, Mercury is going to stop its retrograde movement. So we're finally at the end of this week. We are going to have all planets direct what a joy what a blessing but up until then i think it's time for us to take one final deep dive with this benefic venus direct energy in the bone deep sign of capricorn i just thought it would be amazing if we could just work a little bit on our fears before we can finally celebrate um, what is, by all intents and purposes, the true beginning of this year. It wasn't on the 1st of January when we had <laughs> we had a balsamic moon in Sagittarius, we had uh, retrogrades overlapping each other. No, it might have been by the calendar, but it was not at all according to the energy that we felt in the collective and that of the astrological transits. Now, this week, and especially towards the end of this week, it's like we're getting fresh energy, fresh life, and um, hopefully more wind in our sails to proceed with our relationships, our projects, and whatever our heart desires to create. So until then, let's dive into our fears, let's identify them, let's work with them, and let's release them. This is the hope and the intent with which I'm creating this reading for you guys. So I have here a selection of four different options for you. They all go counterclockwise. So we have here for group one, this is my African Violet crew, and the theme is spirituality. The affirmation is, it's time to connect with what you believe. Mm. Okay, so this might speak to some of you. For group two, we have the pitcher plant. This is the insight energy. And the affirmation is the answers are there for those who look. So you guys might be my curious cat group. And then we have here the John Quill crew. And the energy is that of power. And the affirmation is take hold of what you know is yours. Very determined. And last, but never least, we have Heliconia, my Heliconia crew. The energy is that of realization. And the affirmation is, the answer is here. Take heed. So take a moment now to truly take in these cards. Let me just move the camera a little bit so you see them better. Take in these cards and figure out which of these four options pulls you in the most. Remember, it's counterclockwise, yeah? 
And if you've made your choice, then I am really excited about diving deep into the core fears and seeing what treasures we extract. In the meantime, if you're thinking about working with me, the first link in the description box takes you to my eShop. I am open for personal readings. Also, if you sent me an email already, I do apologize. I've been overwhelmed with requests for readings and I will aim to reply. Please rewrite me in case it's been more than a week and I wasn't able to get back to you. I do aim to give all of you that contact me a reading. So at the same time, I have another channel, Spiritual Soulscapes, that you might be interested in finding out. I post articles on my blog, thespiritualsocial.com. You can follow me on Instagram for updates on my life, on um, random creative things, on my life in Bucharest, especially on my cat, but also on astrology and tarot, of course, my two passions. And yeah, I think that's about it. Everything you want, everything you need. Oh, oh yeah, also my twin flame novel, <laughs> The Storyteller, it can be found all in the description box below. Okay, so let's move on now with the reading. I won't keep you too long. Mwah! Hey group one, welcome to a pick a card reading on the topic of facing your fears. It is the balsamic moon today and because the moon's energy is getting dark and deep, I thought we would take a deep dive into your psyche, uncover one of your core fears and bring a lot of light into it so that you can shed one final load before the new moon in Aquarius and the Chinese new year begins tomorrow. So let's see. This is for those of you that were drawn to the African violet. This is the spirituality energy. It's time to connect with what you believe. So you could have had a crisis of faith recently. Recently. <laughs> Let's see. You got the card birth, babies. Uh-huh. This is your biggest fear, becoming a parent, having a child, a vulnerable being that you can mold to your heart's content and that you might inadvertently transmit some of your traumas towards. I feel that a lot of you need to heal the wounded parent image inside of you, potentially built up in your psyche due to the fact that you suffered from less than good parenting, neglectful parenting, maladaptive parenting, toxic parenting. Let's see what it says on this card. What do you need to nurture and or develop? In what ways do you feel vulnerable? Are you feeling overwhelmed by responsibility? A lot of you that chose this group are afraid of becoming parents because you're thinking, how will I ever help this poor, defenseless, vulnerable, innocent being survive in today's world? It's such a big responsibility. I think that you are um, potentially because you did not receive firsthand pragmatic parenting you might have built it up in your head to reach such idealized, fantastic, over-the-top borders that it's hard for you to bring it back down to the act of caring for another human being, nurturing them, making sure that they're warm, making sure that you know they have their basic needs met, that they can move, that they can eat. So I think it's really important for you guys in order to face your fear of babies, a fear of giving birth as well. Some of you might find the actual experience of giving birth far too graphic for your heart's content. You might um, be incredibly afraid of seeing the changes, the transformation that your body might go through. You might find it hard to cope with or hard to live with yourself in the aftermath of the birth. A lot of you could be afraid of postpartum depression, you could be afraid of isolation, you could be afraid of uh, becoming a single parent in certain cases, of not knowing whether you can rely on your partner or not. So this is a really big important fear in your life that is currently affecting the commitment that you are willing to put into creating more stability in your life, growing, having more love in your life. Because ultimately babies are a sign of wonderful growth. They are pure love, pure unconditional love that enters your life. The capacity to, on a genetic level, reproduce yourself, right? And have your genes endure. So it is something wonderful, but for some reason, either due to the 
toxic messages that we receive in societies um, at the moment regarding babies. Societies are predominantly built on masculinist principles in the global capitalist economy at the moment. Masculinity tends to continue to be more valued than femininity. So thereby, everything that is related to nourishment, children, care tends to be uh, less well paid, less well seen, you know, they don't build monuments for mothers unless it's Mother Mary, right? So there is something here about you are keenly aware of how devalued the role of a mother is in society in the case in which you are a woman and in the case in which you are a man you could feel that maybe having a child would tie you down to the wrong person, maybe it would stifle your creativity, your movement, your space. Um, it might make you feel weak to be um, emotional. It might make you feel like you cannot just be strong and tough on your own, like other people will always be able to threaten you or take your power away by threatening those that you love and those that you created. Yeah. So there is a deep, deep fear here about becoming a parent that is currently gripping your psyche let's see the other card that you got <laughs> wow anima mundi the soul of the world i think you need to understand that um there is something here about me against the world me needing to fight other people me needing to compete with other people and it's so important for you to understand that i guess when you become a parent i'm just guessing here because i'm not a parent myself but i have been working with families and children throughout my whole life as a child psychologist and then i babysat a lot of children <laughs> in my existence um, I noticed that when you have a child, it's kind of like you're more connected to the world. You're more concerned about the future of the world, about what happens to the environment, about the society in which your children are born and raised. So I feel that two things can happen here. You can revolutionize society and you can make a better change by becoming a parent actually paradoxically because you get to raise a baby that follows in similar values to the ones in which you believe in or the ones in which you want to uh, place into the world so you're doing this through the intermediate way of your child although there is no guarantee that your child will support the same values that you have you could get a really headstrong baby and they might have a different set of values but in which case you're incredibly lucky you have an intelligent uh, child that can think for itself you know so win-win in both cases but another thing is that i feel that the process of healing yourself and healing this divide that you feel between yourself and the world um, is too frightening for you to embody but it is a beautiful process that i feel you can let go into I feel that once you have a baby, you'll feel more connected to Mother Earth. You'll feel that there is no case of me against the world or the world against me. It's a case of we're all connected. We're all linked, you know. Every one of us, no matter where we come from, no matter our um, skin color or our class background, we all have a mother and a father. We all were birthed into this reality, no matter through which way we came in, whether it was a natural birth, a water birth, or a C-section. You know, we all were created. We all have these, um, the shared past, this universal kind of characteristics. Uh, we all are going to die as well, right? That's another fact of life. So I feel that you, you, you owe it to yourself to let go of this, to heal your connection with the world by becoming a parent. Let's see right now. It's interesting, right? It's kind of like a spiritual growth for you. Becoming a parent is going to be a spiritual um, upliftment for you. So you've got nothing to be afraid of and everything to gain from this. Plus, you're going to you know, create a being that will give you unconditional love from the beginning. And it's all up to you to whether you choose to accept this love and nourish it and protect it and help it grow, or whether you're going to push it away and teach the child conditional love, you know, but I'm sure the majority of you are more on the other, on the other side, you know, because I'm talking to a group of very aware crew members, and I'm super happy that you guys are part of my soul tribe. So now let's see what other messages I can give you. I don't want to make this reading too long. I just wanted to quickly identify the fear and bring light into it. But I have a message from the Pure Magic Oracle. Three. <laughs> we have here 
Belladonna Visions and we have Caution, Guidance, Clarity and Stand Firm. You need to defend your nourishing side, your anima, that feminine part that resides within you. If you're a woman, you naturally have it through your body as well. If you're a man, you have that as part of your soul, the anima part in you, the feminine energy inside of you. I feel like you're very cautious with this energy. You protect it. You think it's very important. But at the same time, you might be afraid to unleash it into the world. When actually, if you choose to unleash it in a conscious way, it will only bring about more love into the world, more healing. And I think we need that from you. So, Belladonna Visions, it's all an illusion of fear. You can safely um, become a parent. You can safely start a family. We have here as well <laughs> Gnomes. And we have humanity, friendship, hard work, little visions. I think you're going to understand that building the life of your dreams requires, you know, putting in that daily effort step by step, like a group of gnomes, right? Like the gnomes in Snow White that helped her out. Showing up every day, putting in the work, making sure that your needs and the needs of those that you love, those that you have created are met. And doing this consistently throughout time is this kind of nurturing love, is this kind of connection, you know? <laughs> the German word Verbindung is coming to mind, I don't know why. Maybe some of you listening to this are German. Hey. So we also have here the Earth Mother. What, what was I saying about feeling connected to Gaia? Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you're on the outside looking in, if you feel like you've always been an alien and you don't know why you're here, having a baby, I'm not saying that that's a panacea for making you feel more included into society, but it can heal your connection with the collective, with the social world. We have here as well, psychic recharge, grounded healer, mentor, layers. You're gonna step into a leadership role in your connection with your baby. You're gonna mentor that baby to grow, to adapt, to survive. And not only that, but to thrive. And I think that you're super well equipped to do so, especially if you're into spirituality, if you're into the occult, you will be able to accept your child's extrasensorial capacities, weird dreams, weird feelings, in a much more coherent way than other parents that have more rigid ways of thinking uh, are able to. So dare, dare to want more, dare to create more, dare to bring more love into the world and dare to heal your connection with the collective by putting this faith because ultimately having a baby is like you're putting your faith into the world, right? It's such a vulnerable, innocent part of you and you're just launching it into the unknown and the older it grows the more it will go you know if you did a good job the more it will actually explore the world and go into the unknown by itself so it's such an act of faith and such an act of trust but it's something that ultimately brings you closer to the divine. It helps you let go. It helps you surrender. It helps you forgive. It helps you work with something higher up as well. So for the majority of you, having a baby is part of your spiritual journey. It could be part of your north node. You could have a north node in Cancer. You could have a north node in Libra. You could have a north node in the fourth house, in the seventh house, in the twelfth house. So we have here <laughs> this gorgeous Soul Whispers Oracle. Put your bare feet on damp earth. Stand in the sun. Feel the rain on your skin. Ground yourself, my love. Ground yourself. There's so much about coming back into your body, coming back into the earth. Your body can handle it. Your body will heal so quickly. Your body is stronger than you think you can handle it i believe in you i think that those of you that chose this group have such an unfounded fear but then again it is a fear because it's irrational and it's hard to control right it works on an unconscious level so the best thing we can do is identify it and then just work with it rather than repress it and feel sorry for the fact that we tend to be afraid of things it just happens we're humans we are afraid of things so we have here Keep your heart open even when it hurts. Oh, you see how she's trying to keep her chest open and all these butterflies are coming out as she's crying. So no matter how many people have hurt you, no matter how disappointed you were, it's so important for you to take this next 
big leap of faith forward because you might find that it is actually more soothing and more healing than traumatizing or uh, shocking to you as well. And I feel that right now there's a specific message I need to say to those of you who are single parents waiting on the baby to be born, you can do it, my love, okay? Don't let people tell you that you can. Don't let people tell you that your life is ruined if you have a baby. A baby is a gift. It's just that bullshit masculinist ideas that persist in our capitalist society tell you that a baby is so much work and it's it costs so much because you need to buy all the material goods in the world to support its well-being. Indeed, healthcare does cost. Indeed, there are certain uh, things that you need to sustain, you know, to pay uh, to support a baby. But it's not as frightening as people make it seem. And there should be here... Um, a pledge more towards life than towards non-existence and towards holding back from your own healing, your own creation capacity and your own desire to love someone and to help that person grow, to bring a soul into this incarnation and help it fulfill its dharma. Yeah. And on this note, I want to end it here. I <laughs> just, the light outside, it's sunset time, guys, and it's really, really beautiful. I hope to be able to mirror back this light back onto your beautiful life. So I hope this reading helped. I hope it nourished you. I hope it inspired you. I hope you took it in good faith. And I also hope to see my next one. Ciao. Hey, hello, group two. Welcome to a pick a card reading on the topic of facing your fears. Because today is the balsamic moon, I thought we would take a deep dive into your unconscious mind, identify a core fear, bring a lot of light into it, as you see the light from the sunset sun <laughs> reflected here on my face, and then we can release it right in time from the new moon in Aquarius and the Chinese New Year, which is taking place tomorrow. So let's see, this is for those of you that were drawn to the pitcher plant. The keyword is insight and the affirmation is the answers are there for those who look. This is my investigative crew. Maybe Mercury and Scorpio, maybe Mercury conjunct Pluto. What is your deepest fear? Let's see. What do we have here? Wisdom. <laughs> you are afraid to extract wisdom from your life's painful experiences. We have here experience and failure lead to wisdom. Apply wisdom to a present situation. Learn from the spirit world and its collective knowledge. Yes. I feel that, and please don't take it in a very um, like critical way because I do not mean it with this intent. I'm just trying to identify what is happening here. Maybe you've created a story of your own life as a tale of woe, of sadness, of loss. Things always happen to me. I'm always overwhelmed. Why is the world against me? Why are people so mean? I'm doing the best I can and yet I cannot thrive. Um, I cannot grow. I'm constantly blocked left and right. I feel that life indeed has given those of you who chose this group many challenges. But it has been giving you these challenges not to get you to fall into resignation, abandoned, and self-hatred or self-destruction. This is about you rising up to the challenge of facing a fear, of facing an uncomfortable life circumstance and saying, be gone. Now I make the decision to love myself. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to speak my truth and I'm not going to let you back me into a corner. A lot of you could have had many karmic teachers um, you could have met a nemesis or two, like a really formidable opponent, somebody that just really is on to get you and almost like destroy you. And all you needed to do is stand your ground and not allow that person to walk all over you or to take things away from you. A lot of you had to put on a very good fight. I see here fire energy. So maybe Sagittarius, Aries and Leo. I feel that sometimes you had to fight on a spiritual level as well. Maybe there was somebody that was manipulating you and telling you, oh, you're never going to have what you want. You, you think you have a good connection with the divine. Yeah, really. Uh, you know, like undermining your belief, undermining your value system, your integrity, making you doubt yourself. You know, you might have been gaslit by people that you work with and people that you live with. But it's really important to understand that you're not meant to absorb this energy and sit with it. 
you need to shift it you need to change it you need to take it and throw it back <laughs> like a game of dodgeball you know or handball or whatever you want to think of it's so important to get into the game and play don't sit on the side don't hold other people's backpacks don't let people pummel you to death with the balls you need to get up and get into the game and you need to fight back it's so so important that's how you activate and woof, i really feel this fiery energy inside of me being activated as i said this that's how you um rev up that engine that's how you like bring yourself back up to life and you push back the energy you're meant to push back and the more you push back the more resilience you build the more inner strength the more determination and the more your fears and bowing down to you it's like you have to make them your bitch <laughs> we have here apply wisdom to a present situation so i do think that there is something here that is irking you maybe there is a, a person at work that is trying to steal your work or trying to undermine you maybe a parent that is behaving in a very toxic way with you or just a lover that keeps cheating on you or not giving you what you want or like coming in and out of your life again you have to stand up and draw a boundary you have to speak into being your intention you cannot treat me like this i'm not going to put up with that and feel the inner strength that builds up inside of you and this process has to repeat itself so that your inner strength grows just being uh, faced with one challenge is not enough you have to go through a certain variety of challenges in order to reach that deep inner strength because this is the reward <laughs> the kiss so we have here love coming together with somebody now i think that the interesting part of this process is that the more wisdom you acquire from all of the challenges that you have been undergoing the closer you are to not only loving yourself and respecting yourself but to finding a true romantic soulmate that you can build a very strong connection with in this lifetime i feel that you're somehow meant to come together with a person that is your solar opposite if you are the moon they are the sun um, this can be with a same sex partner or it can be with uh, you know an opposite sex partner it doesn't really matter but you both carry different principles inside of you one is nocturnal the other one is solar one is maybe more dreamy the other one is more pragmatic it could be that you might fall in love with the opposite astrological sign on the wheel if you're a taurus they might be a scorpio if you're a pisces they might be a virgo if you're a gemini they might be a sagittarius so on and so forth so there is a feeling here that you are meant to reach a counterpart but first you have to go through certain challenges that teach you about self-love and self-respect this is your biggest fear transforming your life's tough circumstances tough people tough relationships into pure wisdom rise above see beyond see the lesson in each interaction understand how a person's negative behavior towards you was actually a blessing in disguise understand how a rejection from a course of study or a plan of travel or a workplace was actually god's way of protecting you from a group of people or a location that could have been toxic for you in the long run and it might have actually taken you further away from meeting your true counterpart the kiss is about bringing two things together right binding something exchanging energies with someone else it's about sensuality it's about um flowing into somebody it's also about letting go a sweet surrender right you don't know what to expect from a kiss but you lunge towards it expecting pleasure so let's see right now what kind of light i can bring into the situation i feel like you guys are yeah, I feel like all of the people that are listening to this pick a card reading, you're able to actually face your fear and overcome them. I mean, the first step towards facing your fear is acknowledging it. And then as you become more aware of it, you can actually identify it in, um, in those moments when you go out into the public, you meet a person and all of a sudden you feel the fear. And then you have that moment of, aha, wait a minute. I remember that pick a card reading. <laughs> I remember that specific moment you know mm -hmm. this is my fear speaking it's not me so how can i work with this 
And you're gonna have more and more of these moments when you're gonna allow your higher self almost like observe you from afar and tell you, wait, don't get triggered here because this is a moment when you can rise above. You can show your wise side. You don't have to retaliate. You can fight back from a position of deep strength, almost like, a, what was it? That, it was that principle of um, peaceful non-interference, right? I think it was. <laughs> Mercury Retro. Let me show you the other cards that fell to the ground. We have here, uh, oh yeah, Peaceful Non-Resistance. So we have here Closing Circle, Pure Intent, Sacred Doors, Timing and Experience. I think that the way in which you can allow wisdom to come up to the surface is by being very patient and by truly spending time feeling all those uncomfortable feelings that were created in the interactions with the people that you had. So let's say somebody says something awful to you and you're trying to escape from that feeling. It's like, I'm not going to make you, uh, let me bring you, I'm not going to let you make me feel low about myself. See, I'm already kind of feeling that impatience. It's like, I'm not going to sit with this feeling of shame. I'm just going to try to walk away and do something else, distract my attention. But the feeling is still there. Your self-esteem was wounded by what that person said about you. Sit with that feeling, be patient with it, allow the wise part of that experience to come up. Aha, this person could have actually reflected back to me something from my shadow self. Maybe what that person said triggered me so strongly because I believe that about myself. And I need to work at accepting that part of myself so that the next time when I hear somebody say that, I'm going to laugh it off because I know it's not true. That's how you extract wisdom from these harsh experiences. And I feel you can do it. I think in silence, by removing distractions, by quieting, you know, everything around you, you're going to be able to extract gold from your experiences. Let's see as well, what is the Soul Whispers message to you for good two? So we have here, Trust your intuition. <laughs> Gorgeous. So the owl can be your spirit animal at nighttime. I think that you can change and really change the energy and really reflect on the, the events of the day and draw wisdom from them. You know, spend some time journaling, spend some time maybe just staring up at the ceiling and reflecting about everything, almost like projecting the memories of the day onto the, onto the white ceiling of your room. It's really important that you take some downtime for yourself and you think about what has happened, yeah? And in this way, you're facing your fear, you're transforming negative experiences into pure, wise gold. And it's going to strengthen you. We have here as well, there is no beginning or end in sight to growth. You are forever expanding. Why did I say in sight? You haven't finished learning everything you needed to learn. You might think that you have, but no, the journey is not complete. And that's the beauty of it. You're constantly learning something about yourself, constantly discovering new parts of yourself. And that's what keeps the journey of life worth living and interesting as well. So this is what I had for you, group two. I hope this helped. It was a little bit of a surprising fear, I have to say, but it's beautiful how this human intimacy uh, might be the outcome of you overcoming painful life experiences and transforming them into wisdom. Okay, I hope this helped. I hope you have a smooth entry into this new moon in Aquarius energy. I hope you're willing to drop something heavy off your shoulders in your energy today. And I hope you can radiate your light forward. Until next time, ciao. Hey group three, hey my beautiful crew, how are you guys? This is for those of you that were drawn to the jonquil. The keyword here is power. Take hold of what you know is yours. This is a pick a card reading where we're going to focus on your fears because I'm filming this under the energy of the balsamic moon, which is 
a lot like no energy at all right before the new moon in Aquarius and before the Chinese New Year. I just thought we would dive deep into your psyche, identify a core fear, bring light into it so you can drop it off before a fresh new wave of energy is coming into the collective and into your life this week. So let's see, what is the thing, the thing, <laughs> what is the fear you have and the thing you fear most? Could it be two different things? Hmm, let's see. The goddess, wow, you're afraid of your own power. And not only that, you're afraid of your seduction. You're afraid of your femininity. For some of you who are male watching this, you're afraid of the feminine energy inside of you. You might want to hide it or trample it down. Maybe you're afraid it might make you look gay, uh, even though there's absolutely nothing wrong with being gay. But there is a fear here of trying to conform to maybe social standards, heteronormative pursuits, masculinist ideas of power and money and wealth and success that do not fit in the energy of the feminine goddess into your life and thereby you reject it, you are afraid of it, you don't want to own up to it. Maybe you are afraid of the violence that your beauty can instill in the hearts of other people who are living life on a very uncontrolled, unaware, toxic level. So let's see what it says on this card, shall we? Embrace the feminine, create and be gentle, nurturing, yet strong. Do not listen to those who want to keep you small. Believe that you are as important as the stars in the heaven. Yeah, so maybe you grew up in an environment that was highly critical of your capacity to be very feminine, to be very womanly. Maybe you're even right now triggered by women that go off in public wearing a very beautiful clothes that are very, uh, like they emphasize their feminine curves or women that, you know, <laughs> wear red lipstick like myself in this clip. Maybe you're afraid to show off your assets, although I think that a lot of you that chose this group are incredibly beautiful, but you're hiding, you're in hiding. I'm, I'm getting this energy of a person that's kind of putting a hood on, you know, and trying to like stay in the background and stay covered. Maybe you come from a culture that is very um, punishing towards women displaying their beauty, you know, a culture that tells you to cover up. Uh, for religious reasons um, that tells you that um, the responsibility for a man acting in a toxic and violent way or feeling sexually aroused lies not within that man's mind and body but within your body um, as if you are somehow you know by just being you're an insult to that person's uh, capacity to control themselves which is by the way bullshit guys okay we all have responsibility for our lower instincts for our emotions for the way in which we control ourselves in society and indeed sometimes you know we fail at controlling those aspects but again the responsibility lies within us not to the thing or the person that triggered us so there is a feeling here that you really need to spend some time learning how to stand in your power, how to look at yourself in the mirror and to feel confident, to have the body confidence, the mental strength, the emotional openness, right? To embody the attributes of the goddess because a lot of you naturally came into the world with this energy and you're making yourself small, right? You're cowering, you're making yourself small, you're not taking yourself seriously, you could be wearing other people's hand-me-downs uh, or your boyfriend's hoodie or, <laughs> you know, not that there's something wrong with that, it's actually a cute sign of affection and belonging, but if you only wear that, you know, if you only like cover yourself up, uh, if you only shy away and like live your life in the shadows, then there is a problem here with you owning up to this power. You are a goddess. You are afraid of your own energy, your own becoming, your own radiance, your own capacity to be creative as well, maybe even the capacity to become a mother, um, your capacity to attract, to attract love, to attract money, to attract compliments, to even have people open doors for you or invite you towards places because they just like to have you around because you emanate this queenly, noble, warm energy. There's a lot about inner and outer beauty with the goddess. You know, a goddess has both of them. So maybe the, the past Venus retrograde in Capricorn really brought home 
the many ways in which you self-sabotage your power, how you try to make yourself look uglier than you are, how you try to uh, dress down rather than up. Maybe because you don't want to inspire the envy of other women around you. Maybe because you live in a group of friends or relatives or a neighborhood where people like to keep you modest. They like to keep you humble. And I feel that at nighttime or when there is no one watching, you guys actually have this very wha, va, va, voom, you know, showmanship persona. Some of you could even portray this on social media and it's kind of like you live a double life on social media. You are one person and then in reality you are someone else. It's very common with the majority of us because we still live under Pluto and Capricorn repressive era, but more of us are going to be able to blend these two realities of who we really are once Pluto and Aquarius will hit the collective. So not long now, guys, but I do feel that you can already tar start taking steps towards no longer being afraid of yourself, being afraid of your energy, your power, your sexual, erotic, emotional power. It can truly change your life once you own it. We also have here the lover. <laughs> it might attract the love of your life. There you go. So there is a very keen understanding here that some of you are afraid of your beauty. You're afraid to shine and stand out. And in a way, you could be even afraid of love. You might want it on a on a mental level, you might fantasize about it and spend most of your daylight hours thinking about this beautiful world that you can have in your fantasy, but you're not really taking steps to bring it into your reality because you're like dimming your light. The swan, Leda, this talks about, you know, when Zeus swooped in and fell in love with Leda and she turned into a swan so that, uh, you know, she wouldn't be attacked by him. So there is something here about becoming less than so that you wouldn't be paired up with people that are, are indeed incredibly powerful or that you wouldn't be at the mercy of powerful people. And maybe this was a self-protective mechanism when you were growing up. And maybe your parents taught you how to protect yourself, especially if you're a young girl, how to stave away the, the sexual innuendos and potential predatorial attacks of other men in the collective. But now it's time for you to kind of embody this energy because you're grown now and you, you know, it's this confidence that needs to radiate forward from you. And you will meet a counterpart, you will have a long-term partner, you will have a memorable love affair, but you know, it's up to you to, to pick yourself up and stand in your throne to claim what is yours. This is gorgeous. <laughs> and it is indeed, you know, I mean, I chose the, I mean, you chose, I just shuffled the, the power, the power, I've got the power. <laughs> Let's see right now what pure magic cards I have for you. So I even got like a, a strain in my hand at the moment. I strained a muscle as I was trying to talk to you. God, I'm getting older. <laughs> Let's see. That's what you get when you have a Saturn uh, transit over your natal Venus. But you don't have that. So you don't need to have strains in your hand while you shuffle cards. So what do we have here? We have hidden familiars number eight again the number of power allies natural assistance divine support comfort you will be protected if you choose to embody this energy you will be protected you've got nothing to be afraid of you came into this world with certain abilities certain visual um, aspects certain ways in which you pull people in because you are meant to work with this energy not to hide it not to put it under the bed and pretend like it's not there. This gives me the feeling that you are somebody that looks like Angelina Jolie, but you go out into the world with, you know, baggy trousers and like a hoodie. And if people ask you out, you say no. And you cut your opportunities to receive love, to give love, to date really impressive, beautiful people because you might be feeling like, nah, I'm not a swan, I'm an ugly duckling. When in reality, you look like a model, you know? <laughs> like All you need to do is just bring it up, show it. And you know, embodying goddess energy is not only about the physical aesthetics, it's also about how you, how you act into the world, how you protect this energy about yourself, how you 
own it, but also defend it somehow. Because indeed, unfortunately, if we were a matriarchal society, we might not need to defend it so strongly, but due to the current cultural and societal rules in which we have to live, and they each vary according to region, we do need to conform to some of them. Although maybe we can find out ways how we can change some of these societal rules. Mm. So let's see. What do we have here? From the Soul Whispers Oracle. <laughs> you came from the stars, so shine bright. Yeah, so you definitely are a star seed. You definitely have a soul from another planet. You might be feeling like you're not fitting comfortably in this body because you have a cosmic consciousness. And there is a feeling that you always want to go back home. And that time will come, don't worry. But first you're here in this incarnation, fulfilling your dharma. And I feel that most of us would benefit from seeing your beautiful energy reflected into the collective. So don't hide, bring yourself back up. Bring yourself not only back up to life, but put yourself center stage in your life. It's so, so important. Nobody is who you are. Nobody's as beautiful, as talented, as nurturing, as intelligent as you are. It's so, so important that you start believing this about yourself and watch how magic manifests in your life. I think I'm going to end it here because that was so beautiful. Um, yeah, thank you so much for listening. I hope that you take this energy and spread it into the collective. Give us something memorable. Give us something to admire and to love because that's you and you're meant to shine. I really hope to, you know, see you in my next one. <laughs> I feel a little bit emotional. <laughs> um, I hope I can convey this light to you. Hope to see you in my next one. I'm going to keep it short. Bye. Hey, group four. Welcome to a pick a card reading on the topic of your fears because today is a balsamic moon. The energy of the moon is hidden. I just thought it would be the perfect time to do a deep dive into your psyche, pull out one of your core fears, shed light on it so you can release it just in time for the new moon in Aquarius and the Chinese New Year, which is taking place tomorrow. So we're leaving something behind so that we can jump into this bright new beginning that is taking place this week. Okay, so this is for those of you that were drawn to the Heliconia. This is the realization moment, okay? And the affirmation is, the answer is here. Take heed. It's in this big a card reading. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Are you ready? What is your biggest fear? Possession. Whoa, okay. I'm getting two things here. First of all, you guys could either be incredibly jealous people because you fear that what you have can be taken away from you and might not ever be replaced. And this fear, I mean, this jealousy is built upon a deep feeling of abandonment that you experienced when you were younger. And that's why you hold on to things, you hold on to people for dear life in an effort to try to protect yourself from experiencing again that feeling of hopelessness when you were abandoned, when you were little. For others of you, this is the opposite. It is a fear of actually owning things. You're afraid of having a lot of money. You're afraid of having a house, of having a car, because maybe people will steal it. They will break into it. Um, you're afraid of debt. You're afraid of more in your life because you feel that you might not be able to handle more. You're afraid that if you have wealth, you're going to constantly be worried about how am I going to manage my wealth? Let's see what it says on the card. Do you need to redefine what you value? Mm. What is the cost of your loss? What are some changes that are causing you to feel undervalued? So the feeling of low value, low self-worth applies to both of these situations. In one situation, your self-worth is so low that you can't even dream of having more than what you're already accustomed to. You found a way to work within your limiting material circumstances and you're worried about winning the lottery or getting more money while simultaneously you have the desire for more. So you want what you want, but you're afraid of what you want because that more, when it solidifies, when it becomes real, you might not know how to handle it. 
This is the classic case of a person that grew up all their life eating like uh, pre-made meals or pizza in front of the television, not even with a fork and knife or something like that. And then all of a sudden they get invited to a restaurant and while they love the food and they love the experience of being pampered, they also feel a deep sense of shame that I'm not good enough. I don't even know how to eat. I don't even know what these three range of glasses have to do when it's actually just a process of adaptation, asking people around, seeing how other people are behaving and modeling after that. And you can do it, you can grow. This is part of the growth process, learning how to do a certain thing, learning how to perform a certain role, learning how to eat with three different types of forks or knives. <laughs> and then maybe even taking the decision, you know what, I'm just gonna do me and I'll put my hands into this like I was accustomed to, you know? So you always have a choice and you can always grow and learn and adapt. But a lot of you have this fear that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for what I want, although I want it so badly. So you're afraid of that very thing that you desire. For the majority of you, it is wealth, having a lot. It's not just material possessions. It's also having a partner, having a child, having more friends or a wide network of people that you can talk to and work with from all over the world. Being part of an elite group of scientific thinkers or an elite group of lawyers or doctors, you know, like adhering to something that is um, higher up than the circumstances that you are familiar with. You can do it, you will do it, you will adapt, you will learn, you will grow. You just have to give yourself that chance. For the other group of you that resonated more with the jealousy part, I feel that your personal connections are tainted by a very dark shadow. The shadow of wanting to cling on to a specific person and not allowing them to think for themselves, to express their needs. You're suffocating your partners with this jealousy. And it's important to understand that in this process, both you and that person are hurting. You cannot force another person to love you or to stay with you. It's really unhealthy and it will ultimately lead to destruction and desolation. So I feel that this is an important person for those of you who are struggling with jealousy. You need to trust yourself more. You need to trust that if you let go of a person, if the, your partner is asking for a little bit more space in a connection, that doesn't mean it's the end of the connection. It doesn't mean that they'll abandon it, you. Maybe they just need some space to think. Maybe they just need some room to breathe. Maybe they just need to have a variety of different experiences that don't need to imply romantic or sexual conquest. They might just want to spend more time with their parents or friends, you know? And those experiences, you need to trust that they will enrich them so that when they come back into the relationship with you, they can be at, your, at their best and they can give more to you, just like you should do the same for you and have a variety of other different connections that can also replenish the energy and the connection that you have with your partner. It's a lot about trust and it's a lot about dealing with that core trauma that happened to you in childhood or in adolescence while you were growing up in the formative years when your brain was making all these different connections when your heart was learning a lot of important lessons in life something happened to you that was unfair you were separated from somebody you loved so much and you need to go back to that moment, relive it, feel those energies and let them go once and for all. I would suggest not doing this on your own. I would suggest doing this with the care of a professional that can create a safe space where you can psychologically unravel and build yourself back up again with the help of someone. At the same time, if this is something not so deep, it could be just a mild pang of jealousy that gets triggered every time when your partner is saying that they need to travel for work for two days in another region, or they may not be able to talk to you tonight because they are busy having a meal with their flatmates. Those moments can be painful as well. They're not as deep as the other one in which you want to feel like you can completely suffocate your partner with your energy and you won't allow them to leave the house, you know? But 
this is also a pang of lack of faith in yourself, in your ability to maintain your person, in your ability to attract them, in your, your ability that you're lovable enough to have that person keep coming back to you and keep giving you love. You are, and that's the core thing that you need to work on. Let go of the control and bring yourself back into yourself. I am lovable. My person loves me. My person will not betray me. Why would they? Because I give them everything they need and they give me everything they need. You need to start thinking in these kind of frequencies in order to balance the energy between you and other people that you might experience extreme jealousy or mild jealousy in the connection with them. Let's see right now what the other archetype card has to say. The comic laugh more <laughs> it's so important to heal your sense of control possessiveness your fear of owning things you need to start making more fun of yourself in both cases in the case of the jealousy by introducing more humor into the connection you are going to work through some deep issues in a very light-hearted manner in the other case where you feel shame when you're being placed in situations that are a little bit above the level that you're accustomed to make fun of it admit who you are admit where you come from make fun of it show people a different way of being you know it's not a problem if for example you go to a restaurant and you put your hand into a dish and you just eat like that make a funny moment out of it tell people well it's just my working class origins or something like that you know you can alleviate the shame you don't have to live with that burden all the time and that's just an example of many it can be related to uh, meeting the parents of your very high class boyfriend you know or something or girlfriend it can be a variety of different things or maybe um, sitting in front of uh, an academic committee and defending your thesis even though you, you come from a different country and you come from very modest backgrounds you know apply it to a variety of reasons you can even be walking into a store like Tiffany's in New York right and purchasing your first ring from your salary and feeling that sense of wow can I actually I can actually afford this for the first time in my life I can afford this you know you can do it okay start off with small things and gradually embody that power embody that energy and remember to not take yourself so seriously in this process both in the case with the jealousy and in the case with the material possessions and financial wealth don't take yourself so seriously as you climb the ladder, okay? As you break through the class conditions in which you were born and as you learn to trust your partner and as you learn to let go of control, make fun of your fear. Make it your proverbial piac by making fun of it, okay? Don't allow it too close dominion over you. Like in Labyrinth, you have no power over me, right? <laughs> Let's see your pure magic cards. I'm starting to lose light, guys, but I do want to finish this reading for you. It is the perfect time to do it. We're actually nearing the time of the balsamic moon, so I feel like you are my lucky group. Levitation. Why is levitation here? What does this have to do? Higher ground, belief, mastery, meditation. Oh, yes. Of course, it does have something to do. See the bigger picture. Whenever you feel overwhelmed by shame or jealousy, Catch yourself feeling that. First of all, the important step is to admit that you have these uh, moments. And that's the moment when you can almost like get control of that very fear that you are experiencing. So if you're afraid that your partner might be cheating on you and you feel that pang of jealousy because you are aware of the fact that you are jealous, all of a sudden you can get control of that moment and you can be like, wait a minute, I'm reacting based on my fear of my partner cheating on me. That fear might not be founded on the fact that my partner genuinely has some evil intent, but it could be stemming from an experience where I was abandoned in childhood. So I can detach from this. I can crack a joke. I can even bring it up. I can say, you're not gonna go and cheat on me, are you? You know, something like that. You can bring things up. You can name them for what they are. And by naming them, by making fun of them, you are working at dispelling your fear yeah it's no longer controlling you it's not getting you to do random crazy things it's you're bringing up to the consciousness and you're accepting it you're integrating it you're working with it yeah 
and allow yourself to make mistakes in this process. Allow yourself to have moments when maybe things might not work so well, when maybe you're trying to crack a joke and it might not work or it might land in a very strange way. But nonetheless, you're working with this energy. So rise above, rise above the current circumstances, see the bigger picture, try to extract wisdom from this feeling of shame or of not belonging or this feeling of jealousy and wanting to control. It's a very uh, North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio energy that I'm picking up with group four here. You guys could have planets in Taurus and Scorpio. So we have here your soul uh, whispers oracle cards. Every single day is a gift from the universe. Treat it as one. Your true possession is the time you have, the awareness you have, the body in which you live. These are your true possessions. Anything else is fragmentary. It is illusory. It comes and it goes. You use it. Um, it helps you to a certain extent feed your needs, feed your basic needs here. But at the same time, it is not something that will pass on with you as you pass on into a different form of energy at the end of your life. So treat each moment as something wonderful that has been given to you. Create something new. Have fun. Laugh. Relax. Enjoy whatever gifts life is giving you without feeling shame or guilt. We also have here, the love within you is infinite. Share it freely with the world. Yeah, I feel like you guys have these fantastic engines of passion and love and you're just keeping them for a very select group of people because you might not trust the world and actually at the moment in the world when we're suffering from so much death disease and limitation it would be wonderful if you could bless the collective with all that beautiful brave energy within your heart and by not locking it in by not controlling it and by opening it up you're not only healing yourself of shame and um jealousy you know, lack of trust, but you're also overcoming your fear and putting more love out into the collective. So you're doing like four things at the same time. <laughs> Go you. <laughs> and we also have here, heal yourself through eternal love and unconditional self-acceptance. Forgiveness will set you free. Forgive yourself, forgive the people in your life that have harmed you, forgive the people that have abandoned you. At each moment of your existence, each person in your life was doing the best that they could, the best that they were aware of, the best that they were conscious of. You need to understand that people are fallible, you are fallible. And in order to love other people, you have to love them for all of their flaws. And as I'm saying this to you, I'm saying this to myself, I'm also on this healing, forgiveness and self-love journey. You know, we're all in this together. We can all accept ourselves more, love ourselves more, love other people more, accept them more, right? They're linked. So this is the final card I have for you. How beautiful it shines by candlelight. This is the message that I had for you. I hope I helped you conquer fear, become aware of something that might have been stuck in your shadow self. I hope this reading helped, it inspired you, and I really hope to see you in my next one, okay? Get ready for the new one in Aquarius crew. I'm sending you so much light, all the light that I'm capable of putting into this video. <laughs> Ciao.